Howdy, I'm Matt, Chief of the Flutter Bounty Hunters. Today I'd like to tell you about one of our packages called Supertext Layout. Supertext Layout is a package for composable, configurable, and extensible text display in Flutter. You see, Flutter has a number of limitations when it comes to its built-in text layout, text decoration, and text selection controls and abilities. We've made up for a lot of these in Supertext Layout. Supertext Layout is actually the culmination of work that we've done in another package called Super Editor, which is a toolkit for building custom document editing experiences with Flutter. Supertext Layout is like a little kernel of that behavior, which makes a lot of our selection and decoration possible within Super Editor. We've extracted it into this package called Supertext Layout, which you're welcome to use in isolation to solve any of your own text layout and text decoration needs. Today, I'd like to show you very briefly how you use the super text layout package and the kind of power that it gives you. Let's jump into some source code. Here we begin with this super text widget. And when this is rendered, unsurprisingly, we have some text and that text is rendered. At this point, it's not really any different than your normal text widget. It's what comes next that's interesting. Imagine that you want to paint selection boxes. Maybe you're painting selection boxes because you're building in user gesture control for selecting text. Or maybe you're implementing find and replace, so you need to highlight all of the examples of a given word. The possibilities are endless, but the point remains that you do need to know where a given character is in the text, and you need to be able to paint or display your own widget tree based on those locations. Let's see what we can do using Supertext to achieve that kind of goal. We'll come back to our Supertext widget. I'm going to uncomment this thing called Layer Beneath Builder. I'm going to remove the const because it no longer applies. If I save, we're not going to see any difference because all we're doing is returning a sized box. But let me set the context here. With every super text widget, you get two layers, a layer beneath the text and a layer above the text. Beneath, you can think of as being meant for things like text selection, where you paint boxes behind the text. The layer above, you can think of being relevant for carrots or drag handles or something of that nature. We're going to focus on the layer beneath because we're interested in seeing what it looks like to paint boxes around certain characters. Now first, let's set a little more context and let's understand when we return a widget from this method, how exactly is it sized and positioned? That's pretty important to anything else that we might want to do. To show that, let's instead of using a sized box, let's use a container and let's set a color. We're going to paint a rectangle at whatever size this layer wants to be with the color red. Let's see what happens. Notice that it, the boundary of the overall text box is painted red. What this tells us is that any widget tree that we return from the layer beneath builder will be exactly the width and height of the text layout that we're interested in. If we're going to position any kind of decoration, we can think of this top left corner as zero, zero, and now we know where to expect other things to appear. Let's now adjust this. Let's see if we can paint a box around the very first character of text. Notice that our callback is given this thing called text layout. Text layout can provide us with information about where characters and lines sit in the text that we're laying out. So for example, uh, here, are all, here are a bunch of queries that we can run on the text. And let's see if we find anything interesting here. So we can get positions near offsets, offsets at positions. I want to see if we have any boxes here. Here's a character box. That sounds like what we want. A box around a given character. Let's try that. And it wants a text position. If we're interested in the first character, that's going to be offset zero. We can make that a const. And that's going to give us what's called a text box, but we're really interested in a rectangle. 
So this is the first character rectangle. Now we'd like to draw or paint a rectangle that's exactly at this position in size. If we're going to choose an offset as well as a size, we can't just use a container. We need to use a stack so we can gain X, Y offset control. We'll return a stack instead of a container. Uh, but then within, uh, we will use a positioned widget. Actually, do we have... There's actually from rect. That seems like an interesting thing for us. So let's try from rect. We will pass in the first character rectangle. And then what is it that we want to be the size of the rect? We could do a decorated box. That would be fine. Container also is fine. Let's stick with the color red. Save that. And now look, instead of filling the whole space, we literally have a rectangle that's just around the W character. What if we change the text position? What if we say one instead of zero? Well, now we have a box around just the E character. And now it should start to become clear how you could select multiple characters of text, uh, how you could have multiple selections in here. Any text offset we want, we can get a character box. But there are, of course, other methods in text layout. You can start, you can look at lines of text. You can look at entire selections of text. But let's do something interesting here. Right now, we're just painting one box. One of the cool things about super text is that you don't just have to return, let's say, one widget. Like often when we think about text selection, there's one bot or you know, one span of selected text and one carrot. And we're always thinking in terms of one user, one selection. But Supertext gives you this full widget subtree control. You can select or not select, highlight or not highlight as much as you want, which means you can do things like multi-user selection. You just paint multiple selections, probably with different colors. And to make that point really clear, let's make every single character, let's give every single character a different positioned rectangle, a rectangle with a different color. For that, let's say for zero, or I equals zero, where I is less than text. Actually, we're going to, this is the text that we're displaying is rich text, which requires us to compute the length of the text if that's what we want. So let's compute that once and not compute it over and over again. We'll say text length equals text dot two, actually, let me see if there's a length and nope. So two plain text and then get the length. That's the number of characters in our text. And let's loop for every character in our text. So all I is less than text length, I plus equals one. And then we will create a positioned rectangle. We will compute that rectangle right when we need it. And instead of a const text position, we're going to pass in I. And let's just see what this first change gives us. Okay, it looks like we've kind of selected all the text. If you look really closely, there are actually little gaps between a bunch of these different rectangles. This is, this is drawing or, or positioning a widget, a rectangle widget for every single character in our text. The cool thing is if we play with that color a little bit. So instead of red, first let's try, I've frozen up my computer here. Let's switch to what's called HSV color. HSV is a way of choosing colors using different components. Instead of alpha, red, green, blue, it's alpha, hue, saturation, and value. The alpha, we all we want to be 100%. The saturation will go 100%. The value will go 100%. The interesting part is the hue. The hue is a number between 0 and 360, as in 0 degrees and 360 degrees. Why degrees? This is a color wheel. You may have heard that term before, color wheel. We're choosing a color by kind of 
spinning a dial on a wheel. Let's choose a color on that wheel between 0 and 360 based on where I is in our overall text length. We can do a what's a lerp double linear interpolation between 0 and 360 and the amount is going to be I divided by text length. And then because HSV color is actually a different type of object, we have to convert it back to the RGB color. And let's see how that looks. Now check that out. It looks at first glance like a gradient, but really it's just a bunch of individual rectangles with colors that are slightly changing around the color wheel as they go. And every one of these rectangles is a container sitting within this stack. But because the stack is sized exactly to match the text, and because we're given this text layout object, we're able to position all of these rectangles exactly where we want them to match the characters in the text. Now something else that's in the example app, and we're gonna, we're gonna stop there for this demo, but something else that's in the example app, if you want to clone the repo and run it, is there's an example that animates the color wheel selection. So here we go from red at the beginning to red at the end and start over. That's based on this division right here. There's an example in the repo where we animate that selection so that it still has this rainbow effect, but it looks like it's like it's animating. The color is shifting. The gradient is moving. So you can check that out if you want to see how it's accomplished. That's mostly just about um, using a ticker for animation. It's not really dependent on uh, any of our text layout stuff. But again, let me cover the important pieces here. Using a super text widget, you get two layers, a layer above the text, a layer beneath the text. The great thing is that you're given this thing called a text layout, which allows you to query for character boxes, for lines around text. You can convert positions to offsets, offsets to positions, whatever you want. And another really interesting thing is, unlike what would happen if you were to try this on your own, to try to kind of create your own version of super text, odds are if you implemented this, there would be this weird issue where you'd have to always be one frame behind. First, the text gets laid out on frame one, then you render based on the layout on frame two. We've gone to great lengths to solve that problem so that the text is laid out on the exact same frame that these builders are called. So we've solved that next frame problem. All of this happens on one pump of the Flutter pipeline, which is also useful in your test suites because pumping one frame is obvious and easy. If you have to pump multiple frames, you're never quite sure how many you have to pump. So what you end up doing is you say pump and settle and then God knows what's happening in between. Now it all happens in one pump. And this is a capability that I'm, I'm not sure any other package right now is providing related to text layout and decoration, but you get that with super text layout and the super text widget. Now this package has been made possible with funding from Superlist, Clearful, and Turtle. All three of those companies are making use of these capabilities in one way or another in their apps mostly through the super editor package where we depend heavily on this ability. But again, you can access this package on its own. You can include it on its own. You can do exactly what we did here. If there are features that you would like in this package, if your company finds value in super text layout, we'd love to get you set up with a funding milestone to make those things possible. Just reach out to us at the Flutter Bounty Hunters. So that's the super text layout package. That's what I've got for you today. And y'all come back now, you hear?